What's up guys? It's time for another stitch along. I'm just getting my needle threaded here. I hope the color is okay. I'm going to try a little bit more natural light today. I've got a different setup. So we're going to see how good it is. I, I like this in a way because, let's say we're doing apothecary shop today. So um, I think with the more natural light you can see the variation in color a little bit better. Which I like a lot. So um, I'm trying to think if I actually, I don't think I've worked on this since uh, the update. Um, but I thought it's going to be a good time to kind of get some more work done, getting closer to getting done on this page. Oops, let's move all this extra fabric over to the right, get it out of the way a little bit. I'm working with my new stand and it's weird. And yeah, this looks pretty decent. It looks brighter on screen than it does uh, to me. Uh, so I think that is great. Oh, you know what? I need to put my glasses on. Gotta put my glasses. Well, look at that. Everything's got floss on it. There we go. That might help me a little bit too. I think it will. I think it will. So we're gonna start here. <clears throat> All right. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. I just got off work. Came home. Jumping right into this. Been getting a lot of stitching done so far this last couple days. At least I felt like I did. I know Thursday I felt like I did. I got some Ronnie Rowe done. And I got some, uh, what did I do? I did a little bit of Old World Map too. And, and I got done some, hold on, I'm just staring at this. And I got some, um, man, what else did I do? Oh, st uh, Stormtrooper, actually. I made some good progress on Stormtrooper. So that one, I was looking ahead, and this first page looks like it's probably the most difficult, just in terms of the changing of the colors and whatnot. And I think it'll be a little faster going once I get past this section. So I am looking forward to getting that done. I feel like I'm getting close to finishing pages, like, everywhere. So... Pretty happy about that. Pretty happy. So the big news is my husband and I, I don't know if I talked about this in my um, weekly update. I don't think I did. Um, we just got a, a little, like a little electric smoker. Um, some master electric or master built or something like that. And it is working away right now on some ribs downstairs my husband's been working on while I've been gone. I haven't smelled them yet, but I'm sure that they are going to be amazing. So we're trying to get into a little bit more of a... He's been wanting to smoke for forever. And uh, we love our ribs, and uh, we're like, you know what, let's just do it. Because the more we are able to do stuff like that at home, the less likely we are to go out to get barbecue and stuff. So I think that's a good thing. That will be a very good thing. So next week, I'm definitely going to release, well, I'm going to have the, let's see, the Wednesday video. I may do that on Tuesday night and maybe release it on Wednesday. Um, my mom is coming in town on Wednesday, and we are going up to... Estes Park for the weekend to see the rest of the family and so I may do the stitch with me and or stitch along and the weekly update on Tuesday and uh, just to just to make sure that those get done This is DMC number 154, some sort of grape. And uh, I love using, uh, that's the one the good thing about a pop carry shop is that it has so many colors, bright, vivid colors in it. It's a little different than so, a lot of the stuff that I do. I'm gonna go ahead and cheat and put that one there. Not cheat, I should say, just jump ahead a wee tad. Just jump ahead, it's all good.
whoops, he pulled right through in the back side there. All right, gotta redo this. Oh man. I slept like a baby last night for the first time in a while. It was a really good night's sleep. And I felt really good today, which is awesome. I've been kind of cranky lately. Been tired, a little sore, a little stressed, a lot stressed. And so I needed to, uh, oh gosh darn it, come on there, number 154. Stop being so difficult. I guess I'm being, I'm a violent cross stitcher. Err. Err. Back and forth, back and forth. Oh boy. But, so anyway, so today felt like a, like a good, got a lot of good sleep, so I woke up in a really good mood. Feel like I can get a lot of things done today. So, I mean, I'm already ahead of the game. I worked. Well, we went to the store this morning before I worked, so we got up at like 7. Well, he was up way earlier than 7, but we left at about 7 to go to the store. And, uh, got all of our stuff to make our reeves. And, so yeah. So things are going pretty decent. Pretty decent. That one done. Yep, 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 yep. I love working on this project. Once I got past that first page, that was just sort of mind numbing with its. Again, a lot of the, whatever reason, the first page always seems like it's the most difficult one. And it's it's not that it's the most difficult, it's just that it's a new page and you don't really, you know, you're not really used to the colors and go way up here up here so you gotta you gotta kind of get used to it but it was a lot of the same well I mean if you look I mean look at that <sighs> but I'm trying to remember I don't think I was grit well I wasn't gritting actually no actually you can't tell because I, I ended up washing this not too long ago so um, when it's gritted it goes a lot easier but this wasn't gritted when I started it so it just it seemed to take it did take forever if I remember, I called this project my nemesis in the beginning. Now it's not my nemesis. Now I just really enjoy it. And hockey is done. Stanley Cup is over. Washington won, which made me very happy. I think I even teared up a little bit when Oveshkin lifted the, lifted the cup. Because you know when somebody's worked at their worked worked at their job or career or their passion for a long time, and he's you know I, I wasn't a fan of his in the beginning, but I felt like he really um, adjusted himself uh, and became a true leader and a true team player, and you could see it in the way he responded to his teammates, and you know he's a good captain. And, is you know it was just it was just really really cool I just love that moment where they the captain goes and touches the cup and then hoists it you know that's there's nothing like it in any other sport it's you know that the the fact that their names go on that trophy and they stay on them well they you know they stay with the cup for the rest of their lives is is just ridiculous um, there's no other tradition like it in professional sports and that's why it means so much. I mean, and it's why it's so awesome that when they do present the trophy, that it's the captain of the team that comes over and touches it first. In baseball and football and um, baseball, football. I, I don't think basketball, but I don't, I, honestly, I never watched this, the ceremony. Like they had it last night. I didn't watch it and see what happened. But the, um, you know, in baseball, you know, and then football, they, they come in and everybody celebrates and they bring in the owners and the owners come in and they present them the cup, you know. And um, 
you know, in hockey, it's it's sort of like the opposite because they. I need to get more thread here. They um. Well, ah, floss on the floss. They uh. You know, it's it's the players that touch it and they hold it up and carry it around and they pass it and there's a whole you know, thing about who gets the, you know, who hands the cup off to the next guy and to the next guy and to the next guy. And then you know who the last person, well, the second to last person to hold the cup. Once, like, the whole team holds the cup, then the captain comes over, grabs the cup again, so it was Ovechkin, and then he hands it to the head coach. And uh, lots of yelling ensues, and coach holds it up, and then the coach begins to pass it among the coaching staff. So they pass among the coaching staff and everybody gets to hold the cup. And then from there, um, it goes to the, okay, I just have to make sure that I don't miss any of these here. Da, 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 da. All right. And then it goes to like the training staff and you know, anybody that's down there that they, they pass the cup to. And then when pretty much everybody has held the cup, Ovechkin, the captain, captain comes back, takes the cup back from the last person, and then he turns around and he hands it to the owner. And uh, the owner gets to hold it up and, you know, celebrate and whatnot. And I just, I love that. I love that it is the owners stand back and they still get to celebrate, but they put everybody else ahead of them. Everybody else goes ahead of them. And I love that, that tradition. It's, um, that, that is a re big reason why hockey has become a more beloved sport for me as I've gotten older, because, um, it's just, I don't know. It, there's a celebration of doing things the right way. And I appreciate that. I think that's a really cool thing. So we watch so much. And then they, you know, the local NBC or the national network cuts off, you know, the celebration partway through. And so you have to jump to there. Thankfully, they had it on their NBC Sports Channel. So we switched over there and got to watch the last of it. And it was pretty cool. You know, I, I definitely shed a few tears. That was the first time that I have watched well, let's see. I think it's the first Stanley Cup that I watched every single minute. And it was the first time that a team that I wanted to win won it. And that seeing that happen and then seeing that team then hoist the cup and see what it meant to all of them, like that just cemented my my love for hockey. And you know, every year it gets a little stronger. So I'm pretty happy about that. I think that's, um, it's going to be a awesome continuance of learning about it and loving it more and more learning about, you know, just getting more in tune with what, what I'm seeing. And so, but I enjoyed it. I enjoy it very much. Some good progress on this one today. I just got to get really. I just got. I got to get like this. This done up here. I got to fill this in with a couple of random colors, and then I can move this whole thing up a couple inches, and I'll be able to. Um, I mean, the reality is, is at the bottom of the page is literally like right here. So if I can just move this up a little bit, then I'll uh, be able to keep it in the same hoop until I finish the page. So. That will be awesome. Oh yeah, and it passed 2,000 subscribers. Thanks guys. Thanks all you crazy people who've been watching me and subscribing to me. I think that's pretty awesome. I didn't. I totally forgot to mention that when I had my video. I'll have to try to remember that the next the next one. Um, 
because that's awesome. That is just, I, I still can't quite believe it. It's, I mean, a year ago, I, I can remember when I had like 12 people watch my channel and it's just gotten crazier and crazier. And crazier and crazier. Hear little kids screaming outside. Little kids are having fun. Go, little kids, go. Have some fun. I'm going to tie this one off. Oh. oh, but I am getting a little hungry, guys. I will not lie. I'm thinking about them ribs. I don't know how much longer they've got. I know it's not imminent, but, you know, good cooking takes a while. We're going to jump all the way down here, crazies. All the way down here and get some stuff done down here. Oops. Whoa, almost pulled that through. But what am I going to do now that hockey's done? Well, I'm going to watch me some soccer. I got the family coming in town, but then once once I get when I, once I'm once uh, that's over with, then uh, World Cup hockey, World Cup hockey, World Cup soccer, soccer, football. Yep, I do kind of like watching. I like watching it when it means so much because it means a lot to these crazy people. Of course, the United States team didn't make it in this year. That's pretty much par for the course. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I, I used to follow them quite closely, and and I just, I don't know how to say it. I mean, it's just, culture isn't there. There's a lot of fan support, though. There's a group of fans they call the Outlaws, and they follow the team everywhere. They're crazy about the team. And I think that's awesome. They're very, very passionate, but the team has not rewarded them. I, I feel like a lot of it is we just need to get rid of some of the old guard and focus on new players. And we've got some very talented folks, that Americans that are playing overseas now. That kid that's playing in Germany is going to be like the next great thing. And I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Um, but... I don't know. And even the women's team is going to be down compared to the dominance. And, and that's fine. We don't have to dominate. I just want to be, I just want to have a chance. So, but we'll see. It's going to be fun. I have no idea who's going to win the World Cup because I was like, uh, I want to root for the Netherlands. And then I'm looking like, all right, when does the Netherlands play? And believe it or not, the Netherlands didn't make it. And they're sort of perennial contenders or whatever perennial is every four years for the World Cup. I'm going to highlight here a second, guys, while, we, while I mumble and talk here. Um, but where am I here? But, uh, yeah, they, um, yeah, they didn't make it. They had a very bad qualifying, so I'm like, oh, all right, well, I guess we don't feel too bad that United States didn't make it, but doobie doobie doo doo getting a lot highlighted. Highlighting. Highlighting. Cool beans. Cool beans, daddy o. Just peeking at this. I probably need to switch over to a different color now. <clears throat> Just have to drink here. That feels, that feels good. A little refreshment. All right, so let's pull out a different color. Dogs are getting in trouble because He's probably t looking at the smoker. The dogs are on the smoker. 
And I'm like, I don't want the dogs around the smoker. I don't want them peeing on the smoker. Because gosh knows that's what they do. Those crazy dogs. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. I was like, wait a minute, where am I? What color is this? Hmm. Alright, we're gonna start over here and fit get a little bit in here first. I was just staring at it trying to figure out where I wanted to start. Whew. Hold on. I had a dream last night that we were back on another cruise. Which I couldn't quite tell. I don't I don't recall actually being on a ship, but in my head we were on a cruise. So I'm not really sure what my brain was trying to think of, but it said to me, go on another vacation. And I said, you crazy. Right. Kind of holding it down in this direction here. Help me out a little bit. Help me out a little bit. So, uh, any Dave Matthews fans out there? I don't, I've rarely ever talked about them, but they are like my favorite band of all time. And I got the new album the other day, and I've listened to a few songs that they had released before the album came out, and I'm just kind of like, oh man. Like, I have, I have loved them since like 1992. No, it would have been 1994. And um, when someone first introduced me to them, and I don't think they had ever released a song or an album where I didn't love every song on that album, even though some were different, some were definitely different. But this one is, there's some songs that I like like that, but they changed up so much of the rhythms that they normally use. And they added way too much, in my opinion, electrical stuff, like electrical guitar stuff, as well as a ton of horns. I can't even hear the bass player. I, I, maybe I need, maybe I just uh, I need to play it on a different, uh, some different speakers or something. But I'm like, I, is the bass player playing? The guy's name is Stefan. I'm like, is Stefan still in the group? Because... I can't, usually there's like, there would be a, a string of, you know, the, the bass would provide some of the melodies and different things, and in this album it just doesn't seem like that, and I'm just kind of like, yeah, it doesn't, I mean, it just doesn't sound that good. I mean, I hate to say it like that, but that's kind of where I'm at. So... I need to just keep listening for a while. I mean, I'm not going to just be like, ah, I'm not listening. I'm going to their con They're coming out in August, and I'm going to a concert in August. So they're going to play a lot of their songs, and I'll be like, all right. I hope it sounds better live than it does on the album. I'm not the only one who thinks that either. It's there's a, The reviews are kind of mixed. So... I'm just like, oh man. I mean, there's there are certainties in life, and one of them has always been that I will love Dave Matthews. When the music comes out, I will love him, no matter what it is. I will love it, and my faith has been shaken in the world, people. What is going on? Oh well. don't know I just don't know whoa, whoa dude whoa sad news about Anthony Bourdain passing away I was never, honestly, I was never really much of a fan. And I'm not saying that I disliked him. I'm just saying that I never really, you know, got into his stuff. And, you know, the, my impressions were always, at least when it, when he first kind of broke out, was just sort of the gross stuff that he would try. And, um, 
So it was, um, but it's still, it's still sad. I mean, the guy was such a advocate for just trying food and, I'm gonna go all the way down here. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all the way over here now. I filled in what I wanted to over there. Um, and you know, I just, you know, and he had this, this eclectic group of, you know, wide range of friends and people. Cause I mean, everybody likes food, right? Everybody likes food. So, you know, he would, he could sit down with anybody and enjoy a meal. I think that's probably true for a lot of people though. You could sit down with most people, but he, uh, you know, it's just sad. And after that designer that uh, also committed suicide earlier um, in the week, and I don't know if that provoked him in any way, if he, you know, there's, it's, suicide can be contagious in a way. Um, obviously not in any kind of a good way, but um, sometimes it triggers you know, hearing when it's when it's fresh and and painful, it can trigger thoughts like that and other people. And it's it's complicated. If you haven't been, if you haven't really delved into it, if you haven't had anybody close to you that has um, committed suicide, it's it's tough for a lot of people to understand why anybody would do that. Um, I've had. Sadly, a number of people in my life that I've done that, and so I've kind of, you know, I've I've thought about a lot of why would anybody, why would anybody do it, you know, why 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 what provokes one person to do it when another person has the mental fortitude to to keep pushing through, and you know, I I say that my, what I came up with is this is my thoughts are is that suicide is a rational thought of an irrational mind. And it's just, it makes sense that for those people that do it, it makes sense for them at that time, that they feel like that is a better choice than other things. But it is very complicated and it is very sad because you wonder if you could if you can take away those thoughts from that person for, you know, 20 minutes at a time, and you could just give them a break from that ridiculous inner mind that, you know, the one that always talks to you and tells you, usually tells you stupid stuff. It's, it, you know, there's, there's your brain and then there's your mind. And your mind is not your friend, usually. The one, the subconscious one that just blurts out whatever at any time usually is the one that says things that you don't want to hear but it won't shut up but it, it you know I'm just I feel bad for the people that were close to him and because he's clearly going to be missed and unfortunately other people probably have already killed themselves because they saw that he did it and it just makes sense to them. If one person does it, well, that person did it. It's just an irrational thing, you know. I mean, it's... Like I said, you go through the gamut of emotions and it, it's one of those things where it also it takes forever if it ever makes sense. Not Well, it's not that it's going to make sense, but... Um, it ever to be okay like it just feels like it's just never going to be okay but uh, I'm going to stop talking about this I don't, don't want to get you guys down I've probably already got you guys down understand that you know it does get better it always gets better you gotta just go for the good you know I know it can't, sounds kind of dumb, but, you know, like a, late at night, if my brain wants to, like, focus on stressful things, 
while I'm trying to go to sleep, you know what I do? I actually just think about cross stitch. I think about my projects. I think about what I want to do the next day with them or what I want to do in the next week. I think sometimes I'll, I'll think about, oh, what kind of projects would I want to start next? And so that's kind of how I deal with um, my brain being stupid, focusing on the wrong. I'm like, you focus on this, people. And it's funny because if I can get it to focus on like cross stitch, it just puts it right to sleep. And I'm like, yay, go to sleep, mind. So that, that's all I got to say about that. We gotta do some cleaning this weekend. The mom is coming to visit. And so, well, we were gonna clean anyway, but it's time, time to get some things done. My husband is such a dedicated cleaner. I, mean, I, I am so ridiculously lucky that he is like that. Because if he were kind of like as lazy as I am at times, then we'd be in trouble. So I didn't show you guys. I don't have it with me. Let me drink real quick, sorry. I didn't show you guys at the um, weekly update, but I now use like a like a folder, like a school folder that opens up and it's got the pockets and stuff in it. And I'm now using that to keep track of my pages um, from my cross stitch. And when I say pages, what I mean is like I've got so many projects going at once that I need my color charts and I need my um, the page that I'm working on for every project available and it's a lot of pages and in the past I've had issues with um, being you know having them strewn about losing them as you guys have known I do lose them and so that is the um, that is the downside there so that is another part of getting everything organized. I think I'm going to finish that organization this weekend too because I need to go through the rest. Well, the table is going to get cleaned up. And the way the table looks cleaned up is I just put all that floss up where it's supposed to be. Except for the duplicates. But we'll get there. We're going to get. Oh, nap in my future? I, uh, who knows, man? Who knows? I could take a nap at like four o'clock. It's possible. I'd rather not. I actually don't feel that tired. I just feel sore. Let me take some Advil or something here. All right, that was a nice long piece of floss. Oh, I got a stretch. Did you hear that pop? That was my shoulder. That was my ridiculous shoulder popping. Oh, man. Let's put that right there. Go ahead and pull out some more 3371. Dooby dooby doo. Dooby 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 doo doo. Let's see, it's like June. Second week of June starting. We got the summer solstice coming up. It's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Try not to think too much about the fact that it's summertime. Primarily just because it is hot. So if I can just not focus on the fact that it's summertime and it's hot and think about the fact that for like the next three months it's going to be varying periods of hotness. If 
I can just not focus on that, then I'm all right. Let's see right there. So I ordered my husband some hot sauce, some scorpion hot sauce. So there's the different versions of hot sauce. You know, for a lot of people, like jalapeno might be as far as you would ever go, and or habanero. And um, you know what's funny about that is, like, I I like habanero. I like the taste of habanero. I like the taste of serrano. My mouth is literally watering while I'm talking about this. Um, and I pulled through. Oh, it's got a snag right on the edge. Um, and there's Serrano, and then there's ghost pepper, which I love the taste of ghost pepper. Although ghost pepper tries to kill me, I still love the taste of ghost pepper. It's like, it's like loving something that can also kill you, because it's so hot. And then after ghost pepper, there is, there's two things that are hotter than ghost pepper that I can think of. Carolina Reaper. Uh, there's a pepper called Carolina Reaper that's infinitely more hot than ghost pepper, which I don't think I've tried. And then now there's like a scorpion something something, scorpion pepper. Various varieties of that. And um, so my husband has like no heat taste buds. Like anything that most people would consider like ridiculously hot, like he's like, meh. Not a lot of spice there. So I've got this. I bought it off of, uh, Amazon, so I got it coming tomorrow. So hopefully we'll be able to use it a little bit. Let's see how it is. It should be pretty awesome. But yeah, I used to. I'll, I I love cheeseburgers with ghost pepper sauce. A really good ghost pepper, like a smoky ghost pepper sauce. You just put a couple drops on there, and there's enough flavor to last for forever. Another snag. This floss is going to be snaggerific. So I was watching some videos last night of people trying the different sauces and stuff, and the best one was the um, the husband and wife. They're older, probably a little older than us, and. Um, she has like a, they must live, they live out where they have some land because she had a like a literal pepper garden that she had like all the different peppers in it. And so, um, I guess her husband had been complaining because he likes spicy food and that her food hadn't been spicy enough. So that's one of the reasons why she started this pepper garden. So he went out there with his camera and with his wife out there too and he was like my wife said she's finally going to be able to uh make um you know make food that's spicy enough for me and he's like well i came out here to try uh one of these uh ghost pepper uh, or something maybe it was a reaper or something i can't remember he's i'm gonna try one of these myself so he picks it off you know i mean these peppers are like this big and he's looking at me he goes and these are the I think it was a Carolina Reaper. He goes, this is the hottest pepper or, or whatever that we have or something like that. So he pulls it off and he literally bites a chunk off and he starts to eat it. And it doesn't take long, like maybe 10 seconds. And he's starting to sweat. And you can see it. You can see him sweating. And it's pretty dang funny because his eyes just start to water. His face turns red. And he's still chewing. And he's just like, yeah, that's that's got a good kick there, you know, and he's eating it. And then he eats it after about 15 seconds of him eating it. They flash a text at the bottom of the screen saying he accidentally grabbed the uh, scorpion pepper instead of the blah, 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 which is like, I don't know how many more million Scoville units. It was hotter. And Scoville unit is a measure of, of hotness or spiciness in a pepper. And it was like, you know, he, the guy grabbed like the worst one possible and bit off a chunk and then swallowed. Like chewed it and then swallowed it, which is like the worst thing you can do. If I think if you swallow it straight off, like it's not as bad as when you chew it and you break open all the different, the peppers and the seeds and stuff inside of it, and then you swallow it. 
it it basically it was funny well yeah it was funny because he like she's like is that hot enough for it he goes oh yeah i think so and then he goes i gotta get the hose and he goes and runs to find the hose into uh he then starts spraying his mouth out with the hose water and he does it like it goes on and on and on and, he, and he's just like yeah i think that was uh i think that was hot enough for me but my husband would not be so crazy as to do that. Not so crazy. Or not crazy, I'll just say stupid. Because that wasn't very bright. But I would love to actually make some sauces or make some salsas or something, some really spicy ones, because I do like them. I can't eat very much of it, but I do like them a lot. And, uh, whoa, wait. No, no, I'm fine. I'm like, what did I do? What did I do? Now I'm hungry, thinking about those spicy peppers. But that was an entertaining evening watching people be crazy and eat ridiculously hot things and cry, cry and moan about it. I, at one point, I had worked up my spice tolerance to where I could do, um, I love mango habanero wings. And I do love the mango habanero sauce at like Buffalo Wild Wings. It's super hot. And... So I actually, like, I've, I worked my way up to being able to eat like a dozen of them at one point, And I thought, well, maybe I'll do their Blazing Wings Challenge at some time. I never really did it. Um, I, I, it, would, it was too painful for me to do. And what was funny was I would go, I would actually go and run over to Buffalo Wild Wings, grab like a dozen, um, a dozen mango habanero or sometimes the Blazing, come home and, and eat them. I was so hungry. I eat them really fast and then I like my mouth was on fire so much that I would pull out like these huge glasses of ice water and just start I'd never have any milk and uh I would just start like you know drinking and drinking and drinking and I would literally like almost put myself in a f like I was so cold I, it would then you know it shock my system and I'd get super cold and I'd be shaking and just shivering from how cold I was because I drank all this super cold water. I'd then have to jump in the shower for a hot shower and to get myself all, you know, regulated and back to normal. And, oh, man, I just, I'm like, yeah, I wasn't too smart about that. But, wow, oh, this tasted so good. It tasted so good. That's the problem with the mango habanero is that it like, the mango is so sweet and it like just sucks you in and then the heat hits you and then you're like, you're a goner. That's all she wrote, folks. My mouth is watering like crazy just thinking about it. Mouth, it's not fair. I'm not having those. Although we did get some spicy barbecue sauce for the ribs. So I might have a little bit of a kick to it. Yep. Yep. All right, let's highlight a little bit more. Get a lot done here, crazy people. I'm always looking for new things to watch on YouTube. I'm not sure what I'll find tonight. Hopefully some random thought will come in my head. I wish that um, YouTube did a slightly better job of suggesting things that I might like to watch based upon my incredibly crazy search history. Oh, we gotta do the other side. Ha ha! I am making progress on this page, as you can tell. It looks good. Me happy. Me very happy. Oh, 
stretch again. Oh man, Lion Shakes Live. I'm trying to decide if I want to do more of that eight or go back to the six. I need to find my 939. My 939 is like a really dark, like a dark, dark blue, like a royal blue, but darker royal blue. So, because I've got a lot that I could to do here, but I think I'll continue on with this color. Put my arm under here and brush on. Come here. Come here. Come here, flossy floss. Flossy, flossy floss. So my family comes out. Um, they're leaving, I think they're leaving tomorrow from the south. And they're coming up. This is their first western road trip. Um, which I'm, you know, I think they're going to have a blast. They're going to come through and see Mount Rushmore, which is awesome. Which, if you live in Colorado, or near Colorado, or just don't know the geography very well, Denver is only like five hours away from um, Mount Rushmore. So that is a awesome, you know, when I found that out, I'm like, oh, I got to go. So one, one year when my mom came to visit, we um, took a day and went up there. And we ended up, you know, we stayed overnight because that's the only sensible thing to do because you don't want to drive 10 hours plus that and um, it was pretty, it was pretty neat. It was, but it was funny because my mom and I both had the same reactions. Like there's a point where you like, you're driving on this highway and you, you're kind of coming up the side of this hill and this little mountain or whatever. I mean, it's a little mountain because it's not the Rockies. And um, come around this little mountain and it's like, all of a sudden it's like right there in front of you. You're not that far away. And my mom and I were both like, oh, it's a lot smaller than we thought it would be. <laughs> It's only about 40 feet tall, if I recall, from the top of their heads to the bottom of their chins. And it is um, indeed just not uh, not very large, you know. But the detail is really amazing. And considering that it was done in, what, like 1930, 1925, um, it was pretty impressive. And uh, the history of the area and the history of the carving and everything was pretty cool. And... Uh, we definitely enjoyed it an awful lot. It was a good trip. We also, when we were there, we did, um, hmm, oh, I did that wrong. I did that wrong. I did that wrong. Hold on, guys. I'm going to take this out. Frog and ribbit. 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 Let's see, can I do it from the back? Ribbit. Um, all right, where, where, where am I? Nope, that's the one I gotta take out. So we gotta take that one out too, Ribbit. Ribbit, says the frog. Um, but there were other things we went to up in that area that we enjoyed because we are history buffs. And I don't know if you guys have heard about Crazy Horse the crazy horse carving. So they're doing, the Native American tribes up there have all gotten, well not, I don't want to say all gotten together, but there's a, um, basically a carving that has been been, that has been been worked on and um, it is massive. You want to talk about like 300 feet tall, 400 feet long, and it's a 360 degree um, sculpture uh, or basically carving out of a rock. Now, it takes forever to like do that. I mean, it's like it's gonna. I mean, they've they've been adding more crew and using more equipment, but it's still just the scope of it is just so amazing that it's just taking um, decades basically. And it's all privately funded. There, you know, they haven't accepted any federal money or state money um, towards this particular project. So, did I do this wrong again? Did it wrong again. Ribbit. I mean, seriously, guys. I mean, you couldn't have warned me that I was doing it wrong again. I mean, what are you here for? If not to correct my mistakes as I'm doing them. Let's see. Dance, 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 <sighs> dance.
It's because I'm getting hungry. It's because I'm getting hungry. But anyway, um, so it's pretty massive. And you can actually go online, uh, just Google like crazy horse carving uh, webcam. And they have some amazing views of the carving. And I just look at it periodically um, because I just think it's so cool. All right. All right. All right. I'm this here, and then I'm going down. Going down, going down, going down. Boom. There we go. Now I got it right. So, um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Crazy Horse is a very respected Native American chief. And um, it's, it's a heck of a... Um, it's a heck of a thing. It's pretty amazing. I mean, I certainly could never endeavor to do something like that. It's just... The scope of it is just ridiculous. I mean... But anyway, if you're at all interested in ridiculously large stone carvings. Go check it out. Maybe I'll find some cool webcams tonight. I like to watch like the harbors. Um, like uh, they have one in like LA Harbor. The boat's going in and out. If there's actually movement it's kind of fun. But a lot of times there's just not movement. I'm sitting here trying to figure out what's going to be my next little thingy thing, thingy thing. I think this. I think this is appropriate. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. I am getting a little tired. I think we're going to wind it up here in a second because my back is saying you can't sit like this, you crazy person can't sit like this and expect your back to not ache, you crazy person. I'm a crazy person. Did you know that? Oh, I tell you what, guys, I think I'm, I'm feeling a wave of need to stop this. I need to go sit in the comfort chair. So, thanks for hanging out with me. Look how much we got done. We got all this done right here. Got a little bit done right here. Got a little bit done up here, right there. I'm going to work on a little bit there. Got a little bit done in all these areas. So, you know, what I want to do is I want to get that done. Hello. Get that done. You know, just work my way at getting all these little things done. I want to move this up. Um, so that we can totally get um, this in the um, this further up, so it's easier to use, and um, and then we'll be focusing on the last of the page here. So, yay, yay! All right, okay. So let's see what we can get done before I'm going to do this video. I think it's going to be next Tuesday. So um, I got a lot of stitching in my near future if I'm going to get a good video for for next week. So. You guys, uh, thanks for uh, hanging out, uh, enjoying it, and uh, I will I'll see you later.